Mr. Jain, first up, I'd like to know from you. Uh, usually, and I've been following a lot of cases that were presented at the Court of Arbitration for Sports, it is a practice that within 24 hours, you've always got that initial verdict. It always ends up coming there. This is one of those very rare occasions where they've asked for a 24-hour extension. What does this tell you as a legal expert? Do you think they are now contemplating, uh, you know, allowing Vinish to get that silver? Because at the beginning, it seemed like an open and shut case because all UWW did was follow the rules. But now that there is an extension, you think deliberations are on and there is a glimmer of hope. But let, let me first say that perhaps being a ticklish issue, they wanted more extensive deliberations since this could set a precedent in future as well. So sometimes you do need more time to reflect before you come up with the decision. And I would delink it from the glimmer of hope because it's a deliberation, discussion, thorough consideration, which is what a time-taking exercise is. But there is always glimmer of hope when you go to a council of sports arbitration or to any adjudicating body because you always believe that your right, which has been infringed, can be corrected. That's the abiding faith in the adjudicatory system per se. But let me make two other points. First, the hallmark of sports is sportsmanship. And I think it would be befitting if the adjudicating body shows sportsmanship in its decision making and awards a person who went into the final the silver in the least. Second, what brings glory to sport is an active contest. It's after contest that if you win a medal, that medal becomes something as a reason to celebrate because it was won after a match, a contested match. So in this case, by default, by disqualification, they actually undermine the final because in a final, you would actually want to see a match and not a walkover or a pass through. And third, 100 camps and the reasons for it, there's a principle in law called substantial compliance. A person had substantially complied with the weight requirements and therefore, you must allow some flexibility in situations like this so that you add to the fun of participation, contest, spectators, and the eventual result which comes. It would be a well-earned medal versus a medal which came by virtue of a no-show or a no-contest as it turned out to be. Okay, that's a uh, very interesting points that uh, Mr. Jain puts forward. I'm guessing uh, the argument that have been made uh, on Vinish's part would have been on similar lines as he talks about sportsmanship. He talks about, uh, you know, the spirit of actually having a contest and those could be the things that the court may be considering. So that does offer, uh, you know, uh, more than a ray of hope for all Indian fans that would be hoping that the silver can still come uh, in, in India's back. In this case, there doesn't seem to be a visible advantage that Vinish may have taken. So no cheating as such. But what do you think in case the verdict does come in Vinish's uh, favour, what do you think will be the repercussions on the sports per se of wrestling? No, I think it would be a, if, if a decision comes in her favour, I think it would be a welcome step because it would enhance the spirit of the sport. And as you said, since there, it's a fair play situation and there's no foul play, this would do ultimate justice to the athlete. And as I said, to the sanctity of the contest which results in a medal. So it would augur well and it would add to the precedents that you just cited, all of which showed that in a situation, the CAS did intervene. I think the takeaway message is the CAS does and can intervene and it should be an effective intervention. That's the positive that I read from the precedents that you cited. 